Shelby Jones and I'm one of the educators and researchers here at the Office of Archaeological Studies in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And I've been working here for about a year, working in both the laboratories and the education side. And this year we've done something really special with the pandemic and we've started to put together packets for kiddos so that they can take them home and they can work on them at their own pace and have the hands-on experiences that they have in the classroom, but be able to do it at their kitchen table. So this particular packet is called Where Am I and Where Are You? And it's all about mapping and it's in partnership with the Community Educators Network. And they have sponsored this activity with Vital Spaces, which is an art program in Santa Fe and they provide activity kits as well as art supplies to children around Santa Fe and the surrounding areas. So we've been building this relationship for several years with the Community Educators Network and this is one of the outcomes, is a 17-page kiddo kit on maps. So this particular one came to be because I'm trained as a geologist and I've taught undergrad mapping classes and one of the things that I learned really, really quick was kids don't really get to see paper maps. They don't really get to use maps or make maps until they hit maybe high school, even college or ever. And unfortunately, by that point, there's so many other things going on in their life that it's hard to focus. So if we can introduce some of these skills to kids and have those children have the opportunity to play with their hands and to make maps and to go outside, it's a really good learning opportunity for them. So this activity kit has five main activities and each activity has sub activities to really help instill some of the main points of each activity. So the first activity is exploring the parts of a map, what is essential to a map. The second activity allows kids to go outside and they get to use their arms and their bodies to help figure out where north is using sunrise and sunset and then they get to make a map. And then the third activity, they actually get to interpret and kind of put their skills to the test. Two maps that we've given them, one of a park and one of a community, so that they can start to see kind of where the playground is with respect to the school and the farm. And then in the fourth activity, they're going to model the same techniques that cartographers or map makers of the last several hundred years have used to make maps. So they actually get to put those skills again to the test in a really cool way. And they get to use protractors and learn what those are to make a map. And then they get to design the map and color it themselves, which is really fun. So there's creative components. And then the last activity looks at the difference between geographic north, which is the North Pole as we envision it, and magnetic north, which moves around through time. And that's my specialty, so of course I had to include it in this project. And for all of these, they get to use their hands and they get to think and play and manipulate the items that they will be using. So the first activity uses dishes and they're gonna make a map of their dishes. And so all they're really doing is tracing their dishes out, but it's really fun because they get to see that a map can be anything. So in this activity, they just with pencil, plates, bowls, cups, spoons, or forks. They kind of get to choose whatever's in their household. And we've provided them with the piece of paper so they don't have to go search for that. And they get to make a map of their dishes and then learn kind of what the pieces of a map are. And so in this first map, they're making of dishes. In the second map that they make, they are making a map of their bedroom or some living space that they sleep in at home. And so we have the ability for them to do whatever bedroom in the house. And that's really fun because it makes it accessible to all students that may have different living situations. So in the packet, we have an example of how to trace dishes to give an example of that. And then we also have basically my bedroom in a modified way as an example map. And that leads into our next activity, which is great, you've now made these maps, but will your friends know that that is your map? 
of your bedroom or your dishes? How will they know that? Does it need a title? What about a key or a legend? Is there a scale bar? And what about a compass? And so that's kind of what this activity number two, or sorry, 1B is discussing is the different pieces of a map before we go into some more details on scales. So this is what's really fun about being able to work and make these activity kits is this scale activity is very math driven. And so it's really combining the art skills, the science skills, the hands-on skills with functional math and rulers and scales. Um, and then we apply it to New Mexico. So they have to find their way around New Mexico and the distances between different cities. And that basically finishes the first activity. So it's a really short introduction. The idea is that the kids can do this in about an hour. And if they want to put it down, then they can put it down and use it the next day. Um, activity two, they get to go outside, which is my favorite. And they learn a little bit about finding your way and kind of why we need to have a system of north, south, east, and west that's colloquial around everyone around the globe because otherwise you can't say turn left at the dog that is sleeping and then the dog will move and that's not a reliable way of giving instructions so we have a whole discussion about why we have this system of north south east and west what cardinal directions are and they get to go outside and they get to kind of emulate that by putting their right arm towards sunrise their left arm towards sunset and then they are facing north and their backside is facing south. So again, that movement and trying to kind of help students explore these really, really complicated abstract things in a fun way. And then we take it a step further and they actually make a map of some outside space. And again, they are adding things like a north arrow and figure out what's east and what's west and where sunrise is and then putting labels on that for trees, for playgrounds, for patios, for chairs, whatever they see in their outside space. Um, and then they get to color a compass rose. So we're adding those art skills in and they get to actually explore compass rose further. And because compass roses were always art pieces, these are extremely ornate through time. We really wanted to capture that history and bring it into the modern culture and let these kids explore a compass rose in detail. And then the third activity is a really fun one that we actually borrowed from National Geographic as kind of our idea behind it. And it's a really cool way to help the kids understand how to read a map. We live in an era of Google Maps and phones, but being able to read paper maps and being able to give directions and read these maps in terms of north, south, east, and west is really important for safety especially. So we have an activity about a park and this one's pretty simple. The idea being that when you start out with something simple, then the community map can be a little bit more advanced and the students will actually be able to learn that on their own, which is the whole goal of these kiddo kits is that they can work on them with their entire family they can work on them as just themselves and they can work on them with their younger siblings or older siblings and friends. So having activities that are just scaled at different levels was really important to us. And then that leads into our fourth activity, which is making maps. And we recognize that we're making these kits for upper elementary school students. So most of them may have never seen a protractor. And so we've actually worked on how to use a protractor in this kit. So we have a little bit of an understanding of what a protractor is, what 360 degrees are, and then how to use the protractor. We then designed this kit really specifically so that the how to use the protractor can face the activity that is using the protractor so that they can refer back as they are studying. On this side we have the second half of the directions that talk about how to use a protractor with some practice. And on this side, they have a mystery shape and they actually get to use their protractor, which we have provided to the students to map out 
what becomes an octagon. But they have to do that using their protractor, north, south, east, and west, and they have to follow instructions. And so the first instruction is starting at point A. You draw a line from point A to the point that is directly east of point A. So they'll measure here and they'll draw a line to the second, to the next point, which is this one, which is directly east. And we have a title on our map to emulate those com important components of a map. And we have a compass. And so then the next one is move your protractor to the new point. So we're really coaching them through this. And then from that point, you want to find the next one that is 135 degrees east of north. And while this might sound really complicated for um, upper elementary school students, it's so much fun when they actually get to make a shape and find the mystery shape because they've done something that is challenging to them and they have the skill set to do it. These kids are brilliant. And so being able to show that and make a map of, in this case, an octagon is really important to being able to con show the kids that they are capable of doing these kind of advanced abstract things. So there's eight instructions that bring you back to point A, and then they have the question of what shape did they make. And that leads into our next activity, which is again a two-page activity intentionally so that they face each other. And they get to be a cartographer several hundred years ago. So they're making a map using these old techniques. We're giving them the measurements that would, they would have had in the field when they're actually mapping an old road or a river. And then they get to draw that map starting at point A on a blank canvas. So again, we have a scale, we have a title, and we have a compass rose to emulate the good components of a map. So they're initially making a river that kind of meanders north-south, and then they're making a road that has a kink in it. And then the creative part is they get to add playgrounds and schools and ponds with ducks and a forest to their map so that they can actually start to put their skills into practice and know that, oh, if I'm north of the road and I'm east of the river, there is going to be a school and they will draw that in, in whatever form they want. So adding that creative element. Which then leads to the last two activities, which is to find geographic north. So we have them go back outside and use shadows to find geographic north throughout the day. So this is an activity that they start at 9 a.m. roughly, and then they can go until about 3 and they're just looking at the length of shadows and using bisecting um, straight edge, like um, bisecting segments and angles to help find north. And that's true north or geographic north. And we have a description that that is the North Pole, what they think of, what they've probably learned through time. And then we finish with the last activity, again, my favorite, magnetic north. And we show them kind of what a compass looks like in the description. And then they get to make their own little compass. So we're going to work on making a little compass inside a bowl of water. So for this experiment, since we're doing it on video, I'm able to show an actual compass, which is really cool. So this is a geologist's compass. They are exceedingly expensive. I don't know why, but they are, have been used for decades, if not centuries. And this is called a Brenton. So it is slightly different than the military version that I have showed in the activity. But this particular compass is going to show us which direction north is so that we can do this experiment. So that we can do this experiment with our magnet that is provided to kiddos and a mini plastic foam and sewing pin compass that we are providing to kiddos. So in this case, this compass has a floating um, bar right here, this rod, and the white end of this rod points north. So I'm just going to turn this so that we have a rough understanding where north is. So in this case, north is pointing. Oh dear, there's a magnet in my hand and it did not like that. <laughs> so 
it, in this case, north is pointing roughly towards me. And what we're going to show is that this little tiny mini compass, which will be able to float freely inside the bowl of water, will also point north. But there's a trick to this, which is super fun. And it's one of the challenge activities in this um, little kiddo kit is when we take our magnet, our magnets have an N side and an S side for north and south. This is because magnets are dipolar. They have two poles. And what we're going to do is we're first going to hold the north side and we're going to rub from the plastic end of the pin to the pointy end of the pin. And this will give the pin a subtle magnetization. Pins usually don't have a magnetization, but when you give them a magnetization with a magnet, it will hold on to that for a length of time. So we're inducing a magnetization in our pin and then we're going to put our pin in the water and it turned. So in this case, the pointy end of our pin is directed towards north. But if I were to take this out and now I'm gonna hold the south end of this magnet and do the same thing, I'm gonna dry it off first. So I'm gonna hold the pin and I'm going to hold the south side of the magnet and rub the north side of the magnet down the pin towards the pointy end. Now it's going to point the other direction because just like our magnet, our pin also has a polarity that we are now giving it. So we are inducing this dipolar, this two pole field in our tiny piece of compass. So now you can see that the pointy end is pointing south. Whoops. This is why you use a bowl and not a cup because it floats to the end. And so now you can see that the pointy end is pointing south until it hits the end of the bowl and the plastic end is pointing north. And that is the challenge that we ask kids to do. So if we ask them to initially hold the north side of the magnet do the activity and then we have them hold the south side of the magnet and we ask them what's different in this particular case. So this activity kit has lots of activities and the fun thing is that it does get to use their hands and it does get to use their brains, they get to go outside, they get to play with water. I don't know how old these kids will be because we do get a range of kids but I still love playing in the water. So. I'm really excited about these activities that can allow kids to find something that they really like. But what's really fun about this method of activity kit where each activity is one to two pages is we can continue and we are continuing to make more activities. So on the second activity about what the pieces of the map are, at the bottom there's a grid. And this grid is our first introduction to latitude and longitude. We don't use those words in this activity, but these are other activities that we can make and we are making so that we can continue to expand and help kids and help teachers and parents explore these abstract concepts from the comfort of their home. Additionally, we have other activities planned for the magnetic side. So we're going to continue to grow this. And these will all feed into a bigger project that we have going on within the Office of Archaeological Studies to help make little tiny packets, little activities, um, a bunch of options that all feed into each other so that teachers have a curriculum that spans all of STEAM. So science, technology, education, art, and math. And doing this in a way that is social science friendly and social studies friendly in a multicultural state because that is what New Mexico is and that is what the United States is. So working on activities that start off with maps, bridging towards geology or geography and then how the people interact with that geology and geography through time is another goal that we are doing with this packet. But we're starting out with something small, tangible because kids only have so much time in their days. So. 17 pages is enough for one activity and we'll bridge from that later. 
Um, these activities are getting distributed by the vital spaces um, in sponsor with or being sponsored by the community education network and so we are providing these two vital spaces those will then be distributed out to students and we will also have a few extras in the office for interested parties that want them for their own children and we can make more if needed um, and then additionally we have volunteers that help with all of this and we cannot do this without them so the volunteers are going to help us create envelopes today to put our kits and our protractors and our magnets and our little baby compass is all in to one um, bag that we can easily distribute to in this case vital spaces or you if you come asking for one so um, i just wanted to thank you for being a part of this we cannot do this without our volunteers or our supporters so thank you so much for participating in this even from your armchair it's really important to us